Hi everybody, welcome to another video in Greek calculus, section 6.5. Some and different formulas. Uh, first, let's look at uh, the formulas for the cosine of a sum and cosine of a difference. Uh, cosine of a plus b is cosine of a times cosine of b minus sine of a times sine of b. And uh, if it is the minus in the middle, that will be a plus. So first, uh, there will be two things uh, to consider about uh, the sum and difference of sine and cosine. Uh, for cosine, the sine in the middle are opposite. And then, if we look at uh, the function cosine, cosine, and then sine, and sine. So, we have opposite sides in the middle, but the product will be of the same function. So, there are two products. They are of the same function. Cosine, cosine, and then sine, sine. All right. Uh, I will not prove this identities because out of all of those uh, identities in this chapter, uh, this identity are the most difficult to prove. It takes a longer time, but uh, just focus on the application. Also, because of difficult to prove, uh, if you have to, if we have to memorize it, I highly recommend that you memorize this because all the identities after this in the next uh, two sections can be derived from these two. Set. All right. Now, how do we use it? Actually, very simple. If we can write this as a sum, then we can use it. Or we can write that as a different. So 105, how do we get 105? Well, uh, to get to 105, we can use 45 and 60. Right. The reason we use 45 and 60 because we have the values uh, for those. We have the values for those uh, special angles. So that's why we use those values. In particular, uh, we can use uh, the hand trick for those values. Right. Uh, so first, this is the cosine of a sum. So we have cosine and cosine product of same function. The side in the middle will be opposite. This is a plus. So it will be <coughs> uh, subtract. And then we have sine and sine. The angles in this case are 45 degrees, 60 degrees, 45, and 60. Now we just find the values. Cosine 45 degrees is square root of 2 over 2. Uh, cosine 60 degrees <coughs> is square root of 1 half. Minus uh, side 45 degrees, uh, square of 2 over 2. And side 60 degrees, uh, square root of 3 over 2. And multiplying, we have square root of 2 over 4 minus square root of 6 over 4. And common denominator is 4. So we have square root of 2 minus square root of 6. Uh, we should check right. if the calculator is in degree mode. How about sine? I mean, cosine of 105.
right? Now let's do this. Square root of 2 minus square root of 6. Divide by 2. Sorry, divide by 4. So, we should check that. Right. Uh, next, cosine pi over 2. Uh, if you don't want to work with uh, radian, we can always change to degrees. So, what is uh, pi over 12? So, let's look at uh, pi over 12. If we don't want radian and we want degree, so we put degree on top, 180 degree, equivalent to 1 pi. So again, we multiply by 1, 180 degrees, the same as a pi. I mean, 180 degrees is equal to pi radian, but of course, we don't need to write radian. So, okay, so pi. So uh, that gives us 15 degrees. So of course we can write as 15 degrees if we want to. Now, if we want 15 degrees, I remember nice values that we know is 0, 30, 45, and 60, 90, and the multiple of those angles. Uh, so uh, we can say it, to get 15, it could be 45 minus 30, or 60 minus 45. Let's just do 45 minus 30. Of course, we need the cosine, right? Right. So, uh, once again, cosine the products of the same function and the sign in the middle if this is minus the sign middle will be opposite to that it's a plus and we just have the angles So cosine 45 degrees, square of 2 over 2. Cosine of 30 is 1 half. Sine of 45, square of 2 over 2. Sine of 30. Sorry. Cosine of 30 degrees is square root of 3 over 2. One half is sine of thirty degrees. Right. Again, uh, square root of six over four is square root of two over four. Combine the top over the common denominator. So that's what we have. Again, uh, we should check cosine fifteen degrees. How about square root of 6 plus square root of 2 divided by 4? Right? So, next we have this formula for the sine of a sum or difference. So, first we notice the sine in the middle. Will be the same, right? Now, in terms of a product, sine, cosine, and cosine and sine. So here we have products. Uh, 
part of the different function <coughs> Rồi let's look at this Rồi uh, sum 75 degrees Rồi uh, sign You can write this as a sum Seventy five once again, thirty and forty five. We can only break uh, the angles if we want to know the exact values zero, thirty, forty five, sixty, and ninety, and the multiple of those angles. So uh, we use thirty degrees and forty five degrees. Of course, we could use something like one twenty degrees minus forty five. But uh, this is the more direct. Now, sine of sum or difference is going to be sine, cosine, and then cosine, and then sine. In the middle, this is a plus. We have the same signs in the middle. And then we have the angles, 30 degrees, 45, 30. 45 so sine of 30 1 half cosine 45 so we have 2 over 2 plus cosine of 30 square root of 3 over 2 and sine of 45 degrees so we have 2 over 2 All right that gives us square root of 2 over 4 plus square root of 6 over 4 common denominator of 4 square root of 2 plus square root of 6 and then I ask you why those two are the same right so we have 6 over 2 square root of 6 plus square root of 2 over 4 sorry both of them of course this is not a surprise because the angle we have is 15 and 75. Remember, uh, we have what we call the co-function, uh, term of co-function identity. We can go from a function to a co-function as long as the, an the angles <coughs> add up to 90 degree. So here we have 75 and 15 they add up to 90 degrees and then we have a cosine and sine those are co-functions so co-function of the complementary angles are the same as the function of the angle so these two should be the same because we have co-functions and complementary angles complementary add up to 90 degrees Right. Next, uh, what we have here is sine of pi over 12, cosine pi over 6, plus cosine pi over 12 and sine pi over 6. Then goes pi over 12, pi over 12, pi over 6, pi over 6. And the function now, different. So this is the sine of a sum, pi over 12 plus pi over 6. So we have 112 plus 16 is by 1 over 4. I'm going to stick a pi to it. Step side of pi over 4. And side pi over 4 or side 45 degrees is square root of 2 over 2. Right, so that's simple enough. Now we, of course we can use this uh, to prove some uh, basic identities. 
So this of course is the co-function identities. We want to go we will go from a function to a co-function and the angles are complement to each other. They add, add up to pi over two or ninety degrees. So let's go. I will start with the left hand side here. We have cosine of a difference. Cosine of a difference, we have cosine of pi over 2. The function will be of the same, I mean, the product will be of the same function. And the side in the middle are opposites. This minus, that's a plus. So we have sine of pi over 2 and sine of pi, uh, sine of tan, sorry. The rest is easy. We have cosine of pi over 2, cosine of 90 degrees is 0. And sine of pi over 2, sine of 90 degrees is 1. So 0 times cosine and 1 times sine. Because 0 times anything is 0, 1 times anything is 1. 1, I mean 1 times anything times 1 itself. So that's all we have. Uh, same thing here. Start with the left hand side and end up with the right hand side. Right, so we have sign of a difference. Sign of a difference. First of all, all sign of a sum, the product will be a different function. And the angles pi, theta, pi, theta. The sign in the middle will be the same. Now, sine of pi, side of 180 degrees is 0. Cosine of 180 degrees of cosine of pi is negative 1. So 0 times cosine of theta is 0. <coughs> we have negative cosine of pi, negative 1, and sine of theta. So that gives us sine of theta. So simple enough, straightforward. Right now, uh, let's sign alpha to over five, and uh, alpha between zero and pi over two. Meaning, in the first quadrant, uh, cosine is five over twelve. Also, in the first quadrant, uh, we want to find cosine of alpha minus beta. Well, cosine of a difference. Cosine alpha. Cosine beta. plus sine of alpha sine of beta right, so which one uh, we are given uh, so what we know is sine of alpha is 3 fifth so we know sine of alpha and we know cosine of beta but we don't know the others. Luckily, this is easy to find. So let's uh, focus on alpha. Right, for alpha, we have sine of alpha, 3 fifths. And alpha in the first quadrant. So, we can draw a triangle, the right triangle, the angle is alpha, well sine is opposite of graduation, right? So opposite, or we can use x, y, and r if we want to, uh, so cos uh, sine is uh, y over r. So y over r. 
so we can let y equal to 3 and r equal to 5 so in this case of course we can solve for x here easily x square plus y square equal to r square so we have x square uh, y square to r square and then subtract 3 square so we have x square uh, 5 square 25 minus 9 16 uh, taking square root on both sides there's a plus or minus we have 16 which is plus or minus 4 but since this is in the quadrant 1 we only choose the positive x values uh, so x is 4 and finally what we need is uh, cosine of alpha will be x over r 4 fifths Right, so that's easy. Now we know the cosine of alpha is 4 fifths. Now we just need sine of beta. Now we go to beta. Cosine of beta is 5 with 12. And ratio for cosine is x over r. And beta is in quadrant one. Right, same thing, raw triangle. Uh, the angle is better. This triangle we have x is equal to five. And R is equal to 12. And of course, here we can solve for Y. Opposite. So X square plus Y square equal to R square. Uh, 5 square plus Y square equal to uh, 144. 12 square. Uh, so y square equal to 12 square is 144 minus 5 square. <coughs> well, yeah, it's not going to be nice and even, but uh, I should make that 13, but uh, it's fine. So y square equal to 119 and then we just have y equal to plus or minus square root of 119 and once again uh, in quadrant 1 y values is positive also so we just need to find sign of beta sign is equal to y over r so square root of 119 over r of 12 right then we can go back to this identity cosine of alpha 4 fifths cosine of beta 5 or 12 sine of alpha 3 fifths sine of beta square root of 119 over 12 so here we will have uh, 20 over 60 right of course I can cancel the 5 
we don't want to do that because here we have the common denominator of 60 right now we can add them 20 plus 3 square root of 119 right uh, let's check uh, we have alpha uh, size of alpha is 3 fifth uh, cosine of beta is 5 over 12 uh, so let's keep things in radian or degree actually this does matter right. uh, what we have is cosine of is of alpha I can say because it is both from in quant one so I don't have to worry about the other values uh, so I would just say sine inverse of 3 fifth and then minus cosine inverse of 5 over 12 so like that so we have 20 is that equal to 3 20 plus 3 times square root of 119 divided by 60 right so they are the same by the way when we take the side inverse on both sides the inverse do not cancel the function the inverse will cancel the function if it is in the domain and of course in the certain domain uh, since this is the first quadrant the function and the inverse definitely will cancel each other so the inverse will cancel the function in the first quadrant um, in other quadrant it might not be the case <coughs> So we have the sign of a sum and the side of a difference. By the way, if we want, let's say, how about we do the second of a plus b? Well, in that case, what we do is just have one over cosine of a plus b, and the same way, it's going to be the reciprocal of uh, cosine of a plus b we can try that so uh, sine cosine uh, consequently we should have cosecant and secant now only need tangent and cotangent well uh, the tangent and cotangent the formula will be different uh, so we also have a similar situation here the sine will be the same but uh, the way it works it's going to be like that a uh, sum of the tangent and one over the product of the tangent. All right. Let's see if this works. Let's see how it works. <coughs> right. Let's prove this. So left hand side equal tangent of theta plus pi. Tangent, the product of tangent, I mean, uh, tangent of theta plus pi or tangent of a sum. First, we have the sum of the tangent over 1 minus the product of tangent. Tangent of pi, so this is in radian. So tangent of pi is zero. So we just have zero here. So we have tangent of theta over one minus tangent of theta. Um, zero because that cancel out we have tangent over one <coughs> and that's what we have so simple enough so this formula is true because 
a period for tangent is a pi or 180 degrees. So when we add a pi or 180 degrees, uh, we should have the same tangent values. Right. Next, we have this. So we start with the left hand side. Uh, tangent of a difference. First, we have tangent of difference of the tangent. Over 1, uh, the side will be opposite. 1 plus the product. Of tangent. Right. So what is tangent of pi over 2? Well, too bad it is undefined. Of course, if it is undefined, we cannot use that. We have to use something else. Right. Try something else. Luckily, it's not that bad. We also have tangent is sine over cosine, right? Uh, so we write sine of theta and cosine of pi over 2 subtract cosine of theta sine of pi over 2 over cosine of theta cosine of pi over 2 plus sine of theta sine of pi over 2 right. now, cosine of pi over 2 cosine of 0 cosine of 90 degrees is 0 sine of 90 degrees is 1 When we simplify uh, 0 and 0, so those two cancel out, we just have uh, negative cosine of theta over sine of theta. That gives us negative cotangent of theta. So it's simple enough, really straightforward. Now we we'll switch gear to something else. So uh, there will be a lot of application, a lot of use of this uh, sum and difference identities, including uh, the, the most useful is that we use those identities to prove the other identities or something like this. Of course, what we have in the next two sections as well. But now we look at uh, the equation. They will say, how do we solve that? Of course, we did have something like this earlier. And the way we do this is uh, we can uh, try to square both sides. And that will help. And usually when we square both sides, I want to move uh, either the sine or the cosine on the other side. And only then I can square. But whenever we square both sides, there's an asterisk here. Meaning that when we square both sides, we need to check the answer. Right. So we have sine of theta. 
go south there, huh? He go to one. By the way, just for the simplicity, for the demonstration, uh, let it know the solution between zone two parts. So that saves us some space because we might not have a lot of space here. So I will move one of those to the other side. Let's move the go side. And now we swear both sides. Of course, when we swear both sides, make sure we check the answer. Right. This looks like a long problem, so I'm going to save some space. Only write on half of a page. Right, so size square, and then when one minus cosine square, so I just write one minus cosine, one minus cosine. So size square. Uh, one times one minus cosine. And minus cosine, so we have minus of two cosine. And cosine cosine is a cosine square. Now we have cosine square and then sine square. Uh, we can use Pythagorean identity there. However. Uh, we need to write everything in terms of cosine because we have the cosine theta here. If everything in terms of cosine, that should be easy too, so far. So, we have um, cosine square plus sine square is equal to 1. So, here we write everything in terms of cosine. So, sine square. is equal to 1 minus cosine square. Right. And we will substitute this into sine square. So we can subtract one on both sides or we just cancel them and we move everything to one side. So plus cosine square. So we will have zero equal to uh, negative two cosine theta plus cosine square theta. Uh, usually, when we have an equation like this, uh, we do substitution, let u equal to cosine theta. But now, uh, this one is simple enough. We can just go ahead and factor out a cosine. Oh, by the way, there's two cosine, right? Right, I will factor out two cosine. We we'll factor that out. We have negative 1 plus a cosine equal to zero and when we have this a product equal to zero meaning one of them is equal to zero so we have uh, of course two is not going to be zero so two doesn't help uh, but we have cosine equal to zero or we have minus one plus cosine of theta equal to zero so we have two uh, from this equation we have two Cosine equal to zero and uh, sine and um, cosine equal to zero and minus one plus cosine equal to zero. So we're going to do both of them. Right, first, 
cosine equal to zero. Uh, trigonometry equation of cosine, uh, we can say theta equal to cosine inverse of zero uh, plus 180 degrees, I mean plus 360 degree times n or we say 2 pi n or theta equal to negative cosine opposite of cosine inverse of 0 plus 2 n pi right cosine inverse of 0 is pi over 2 Usually, when we do inverse, we give things in degrees. Uh, cosine inverse of 0, 9 degrees, pi over 2, uh, plus 2n pi. Or theta equal to uh, negative pi over 2, plus 2n pi. That's what we have for cosine equal to zero. Now we go to the others. Negative one plus cosine of theta equal to zero. So cosine is equal to one. So cosine equal to one. Uh, so we have theta equal to cosine inverse. Of 1 plus 2n pi or theta equal to negative cosine inverse plus 2n pi so we have theta equal to cosine inverse of 1 is zero or of course we have negative zero but those two will be the same because plus zero I mean positive zero negative zero will be the same so we only have one answer is two uh, n pi so we have the solution here We have uh, pi over 2 and negative pi over 2 plus 2 n pi. So pi over 2 and negative pi over 2. So we have those two values. And then the other two. Uh, we have 0. So we have three solutions. 1, 2, 3. All right. Now we check them. Okay, the fastest way to check them, of course, I use the calculator. Uh, of course, we can use degree or radian. Let's choose radian. All right, first, uh, pi over 2. Of course, I'm not going to consider the 2 n pi. Just take the, the value, so it's pi over 2. It's down to x. And then we'll just say sine of x plus cosine of x. Is that equal to 1? Yes. So we check. Uh, we have a lot of space here, but we check for the pi over 2 plus 2k pi, uh, 2n pi, or 2 pi n. And that one's good. How about negative pi over 2? Stone to x. And let's do this. It's negative 1, so it's not good. And then we have 0, of course. 
to endpoint. I'll just use zero. And that gives us one. So that's the check. Yeah, the equation is sine plus cosine equal to one. And uh, we have two solutions, zero or 90 degrees, or all of those coterminal angles. Right, so that is one way to do that. And we say, what that has to do with the sign of a sum or a difference or cosine? Well, so this is one way to do it. What we learned on chapter 6, I mean, on the previous uh, section. Now, another way to do this is to combine sine and cosine. So, now, this is a little more elegant. Sine plus cosine equal to 1. Then the hint here is divide both sides by square root of 2. Then you say, why uh, do we have square root of 2 from? Well, you see. So I divide by square root of 2. On both sides. So that gives us 1 over square root of 2. Sine of theta plus 1 over square root of 2 cosine of theta equal to 1 over square root of 2. Right. So how did that help? Well, notice that uh, 1 over square root of 2. If we multiply square root of 2 on the top and bottom to rationalize the denominator, we have square root of 2 over 2. And this is because it's equal to both sine of 45 degrees. Now let's use uh, pi over 4 then. And then cosine pi over 4. I mean, sine of pi over 4 or cosine pi over 4. Right. So, 1 over square root of 2 is either sine of pi over 4 or cosine pi over 4. So, of course, we can choose. Uh, so, in that case, this 2. Uh, let's write this as cosine of pi over 4. And write this guy as sine of pi over 4. And now we have sine cosine. Cosine, sine, sine, cosine. So the this is the sum, sine of a sum. So we can write this as sine of theta plus pi over 4 equal to 1 over square root of 2. Now this is very simple. We have sine equal to something. Uh, so we have theta plus pi over 4 equal to sine inverse of 1 over square root of 2 plus 2 n pi or theta plus pi over 4. Well, uh, previous equation we have cosine is opposite, psi will be a uh, supplement. Of sine inverse of 1 over square root of 2 and then 2 n pi. Well, so we have theta plus pi over 4 psi inverse of 1 over square root of 2 plus that is equal to uh, pi over 4 
pi minus um, that is pi over 4 I uh, subtract pi over 4 on both sides so we have theta equal to that subtract and then we have 2 n pi of course we subtract pi over 4 on both sides So we have 1 minus 1 fourth minus 1 fourth. And that is 0.5. So if we stick a pi to it, we have pi over 2 plus 2 n pi. Right. Compared to the last solution, of course, we have the same thing. However, this was tech less work and it's more elegant we don't even have to check the answer because we didn't square both sides right so uh, how do we do this in general well in general is how do we combine uh, something times sine plus something times cosine because we don't even need to solve for c so the focus on is the left hand side Uh, so what we do here is first we divide by something when we divide by something that help us to um, turn those two into a sine cosine but we have to do that uh, stat strategically we can just divide by random number right so what we see is that if this is a and b if we draw a triangle like a and b here the hypotenuse is square root of a square plus b square so we have uh, adjacent opposite and hypotenuse so this will turn into a trig function later so what we multiply by uh, what we divide by is going to be square root of a square plus b square but of course we cannot just do that we have to multiply it first so we have square root of a square plus b square so I multiply it first and then I can divide that later sign Because when we multiply them out, they will cancel out. Now, what we have that with the help of this triangle, uh, what is a over square of a square plus b square? Well, that is uh, adjacent over hypotenuse. So we can turn this into a cosine. Uh, let's that angle be phi. So we will have a square root of a square plus b square. And here we have cosine of phi is a over square root of a square plus b square. And then b over b is opposite, so that will be sine b over square root of a square plus b square. And this is a sign of a sum so if square root of a square plus b square and then sine of theta plus phi right, so that is the way we combine sine cosine uh, we'll see 
uh, a lot of this in the higher level courses. So I guess that is useful. Of course, not just we're not just using this to solve the equation. Of course, there's uh, other use as well. Right. Now, let's try to simplify this. Uh, simplify cosine inverse of that uh, plus. Okay. So cosine of a difference. I mean cosine of a sum is equal to cosine of sine inverse of one half and then sine I mean cosine cosine of sine inverse of three fifth well I need to write smaller sine of sine inverse of one half and sine and sine inverse of three fifth sine and sine inverse cancel out that is one half sine and sine inverse cancel out of three fifth okay uh, the function cancel the inverse if it is defined so we just end up with Cosine of sine inverse of one half and cosine of sine inverse of three fifth. I uh, subtract one half times three fifth. We just need to do this too. cosine and sine inverse of one half but we do this a quite a lot uh, sine inverse uh, let that be theta then we can check the sine on both sides because the sine will cancel the inverse if it exists so if sine is equal to one half sine is opposite over hypotenuse or y over r uh, we draw a triangle uh, angle theta opposite is y equal to 1 and r is equal to 2 uh, to solve that we should have x so x square plus y square equal to r square uh, substitute 1 in for y and 2 in for r so we have x uh, equal take the square root on both sides 4 minus 1 is 3 and this is uh, side for one half the inverse it is positive so the is this in quadrant 1 uh, so we just take the positive values here so square root of 3 and finally cosine of side inverse of one half is square root of 3 x over r right so we find one of them so we have 3 over 2 now let's try the other one cosine of sine inverse of 3 fifth Now we let theta equal to sine 
sine inverse of 3 fifth. Or we can take sine on both sides. Sine sine inverse cancel out is 3 fifth. And then sine is equal to 3 fifth, which is uh, y over r. And then we draw a triangle. So x squared plus y squared equal to r squared. Because this is common enough. 3, 4, 5 um, Pitaran 3, 4, 5 triangle, right? Uh, y square, 3 square, 5 square. So x equal to plus or minus uh, square of 16 or plus or minus 4. Uh, once again, uh, sine inverse of a positive will be in first quadrant. So we're going to take the positive values. And then we have cosine of sine inverse of 3 fifth is equal to x over r. Four over five. And then we put back into the prong. This one equal to uh, cosine inverse of cosine of sine inverse of one half. So we have three over two times cosine of sine inverse of three fifth is four fifth minus that which gives us three over ten. And um, that's also ten four square root of three. Of course, we don't want to cancel the 4 and the 2 here because the common denominator is 10. We don't want to mess with that. Even though we can simplify the 4 and 10, uh, it's more convenient to just leave it as a S is. So we have the common denominator. That's what we have. So, of course, uh, we should check. Uh, I think I don't think degree and radian is a problem here. So let's just keep in radian. Right, um, cosine. Actually, it, it should be in radian because when we do that, that gives us the values, and we should use. Uh, well, if it never mind, if it gives degrees, it's fine. Right, so cosine of sine inverse of one half. I think this one, if we have. Um, Degree, it will be fine. Uh, actually, we can check. So that is what we have. But is that equal to 4 uh, square root of 3 minus 3 divided by 10? Why put like that? Right, of course, those are the same. Now, if we keep things in degree mode, and then we do this again, yeah, that should be the same. So, degree is already in, uh, doesn't matter. So, that's what we have. Right. Right. Now, the next one, we do a similar thing. Similar thing. Uh, sign of a sum is sine and sine inverse of x sine cosine of cosine inverse of x plus cosine of sine inverse and 
against Sai of Cosine Inverse. Right, what do we have here? The Sine and the Sine Inverse. Well, that easy. That cancel out. Uh, cosine, Cosine Inverse also cancel out. We assume that everything is defined. Now, all we need to do is find cosine of sine inverse and sine of cosine inverse. Well, that's like exactly what we do here with uh, the triangle. So we know this one and this one. Just need to find these two. Uh, cosine of sine inverse of x. All right. So, um, let theta be the inverse function. So if we want to simplify that, the function, we can show the inverse. We take sine on both sides. That case your L we have sign is equal to x. Let's just write x over 1. Now, uh, for this one, let's uh, use opposite over hypotenuse as if we use x and uh, cosine, that x and y. That will be confusing with this x already have. Right. So opposite x hypotenuse is 1. Uh, so because of that, this adjacent uh, Bittown theorem will be square root of 1 minus x squared. Once again, we only take the positive values here. Because sine inverse is in quadrant 1 and 4, 1 or 4, then we take cosine of quadrant 1 or quadrant 4 is going to be positive. So that's why we will only take the positive values here. Uh, what we actually need is a uh, cosine of the sine inverse. Of course, cosine is adjacent over the hypotenuse. Adjacent over hypotenuse. Well, that's just one over. Uh, over 1 to just 1 minus square root of 1 minus x squared. So that's all we have. Now we've we got cosine of the sine inverse of x. Now we just need the other one. Now first we let theta equal to cosine inverse of x. Then we can take cosine on both sides. Cosine, cosine cancel out. We have cosine of, let's try x over 1 because we do need the ratio because uh, the trig trigonometry function values equal to a ratio. Opposite for sine, it is adjacent over hypotenuse. So, triangle adjacent hypotenuse. So, the opposite will be square root of 1 minus x squared. Right, the same thing, uh, be time until. Now, we also take the positive values because cosine inverse, uh, the domain of cosine inverse is quadrant 1 or quadrant 2. Sine of quadrant 1 or quadrant 2 is going to be positive. So that's why we keep positive. So what we need is the sine of the cosine inverse. And sine is 
the opposite over hypotenuse. Opposite over hypotenuse, which is F1 minus x squared. And put everything together, sine, sine inverse cancel out. Cosine and cosine inverse cancel out. Cosine of sine inverse square root of 1 minus x square. And cosine inverse, I mean sine of cosine inverse, that also square root of 1 minus x square. We have x square of square root times square root is a square. Square cancel the square root, we have x square plus 1 minus x square plus x square cancel out, that gives us 1. So that's simple enough. Of course, uh, in this section, the sign, the sum of a cosine and the sine and then tangent, the formula is simple. I just put a lot of different examples so we have the review in the trigonometry equation or we do the comp uh, combination of the function and the inverse. So I think we review quite a few things uh, all the done learning about the sum and difference identities. But anyway, I will stop the video here as always. Thank you for watching. See you in another video in pre-calculus.